Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. My name is Martin Demon. I'm the lead technical specialist at Truck Science. Today, I'll cover the basics of using our axle weight calculator to configure safe, legal, and efficient vehicles. This webinar will be a basic introduction for those people who are still new to the tool and a refresher for those who are already familiar with the app. I will include some of the new features we added over the last year, so there should be something in it for everyone. We'll cover how to calculate axle masses and center of gravity. We'll check compliance against manufacturer ratings, regulations, and your own organization standards. I'll show you how to maximize your payload. Uh, I'll, sh I'll explain how you can use or search the library for vehicles and equipment from specific manufacturers. And I'll show you how you can request uh, any missing data. We'll look at different ways for you to add your own products. And I'll show you how you can share your designs with other users of the software and how to generate professional reports uh, with your logo. And finally, I'll show you where to get help if you get stuck. To, to demonstrate how you can use our app to configure a vehicle, I'll take you through a live demo in a minute. We'll start with a traditional 4x2 diesel chassis and add a body and some equipment to determine the maximum payload carrying capacity. I will then show you how you can swap the vehicle to a similarly specced battery electric chassis so that we can compare the tear mass and payload for the two different technologies. We'll also add a, a small pet trailer to this vehicle to see if it is suitable for towing. I will cover most of the features of the software as we go through these calculations. Uh, Tony, are there any questions uh, before we get started with the demo? Let me just check in there with Tony. Uh, we don't have any questions yet, Martin, um, but if anyone has any along the way, then you can use that question and answer feature and I'll, um, I'll pop up and answer what I can as we go. Thanks, Tony. All right, so let's get started. So you can access the Axel Weight Calculator from the homepage of our website. Here you can either choose to register for a free trial or click on login if you already have a, an account with us. The app will then open to its own home page where you can select a vehicle from any of these manufacturers. On the left, you can also access your saved calculations and calculations that have been shared with you. If you are new to the app or need help, you can go to the resources section. Here you can watch <clears throat> uh, short explainer videos, for example, on how to prepare a drawing for import. Uh, there are also some case studies on some of our customers, uh, with previously recorded uh, webinars, and useful documents. But the main purpose of the homepage is to start a new calculation. For our first example, we'll select a Fuso Fighter 1627. So the best place to start would be on the manufacturer card. So we have added different filtering options to make it easy for you to find a vehicle. So we'll start off with Fuso. The range will be Fighter, and the axle layout will be four by two. This still leaves us <clears throat> with quite a long list of vehicles to choose from. Uh, we can narrow down our choice uh, by adding the vehicle model, for example, 1627. Let's say we want an air suspension and a nine-speed transmission. That'll narrow down our choice to these four options. You can also search on the model code and you can order your results on by any of these columns. The gross vehicle mass and gross combination mass will also help you find the required variation that you're looking for. If you still can't find the vehicle that you need, you can ask us to add it for you. For this, you can go to the feature here to request a vehicle. So we typically add new models when they become available and prioritize vehicles on request. 
Okay, so for our example, I'll select this option here, the Euro 5 version with the six and a half meter wheelbase. So the vehicle will now open with a technical drawing, the dimensions and the masses as per the information on the manufacturer's spec sheet. Okay, there's also a dashboard for validating your calculation against manufacturer limits, the regulations, and your own organization standards. You can also add your own favorite measurements here. Let's drill down on regulations for a minute. Uh, you'll notice that we, by default, we validate the calculation against the Australian national regulations. If you want to change this, you can select settings from here, or you can go to the toolbar at the top and select settings. So whilst the Australian national regulations apply to most states, uh, we recommend that you choose the regulations for your particular state uh, to take full advantage of some of the exemptions that may apply. And if you are from New Zealand, you will also find the land transport rules here. Okay, so we'll leave it at the national regulations and I'll go back to the dashboard overview. If you have a small screen, we recommend that you go to the full screen option. So for that, you can go to the toolbar, select full screen. This will maximize the graphic area and make it easier for you to customize your calculation. To start the process of adding a body and equipment, you'll use the menu options on the left. First one is for making changes to the vehicle. The next one is for adding the body. This one is for uh, adding equipment such as a fridge unit and a tail lift. And this last one here is for payload. You can add up to two trailers to your vehicle as well. So let's start with the vehicle. So here you can make changes to some of the dimensions. For example, we can click on this override and then increase the wheelbase. If we deselect this override, the wheelbase will return to its original default dimension. Under masses and axles, you can add pusher and tag axles, or you can make changes to the masses on the front axle, rear axle, and the total for the vehicle. Energy source will list the details for the fuel tank and the AdBlue tank. So we recently released an update for this to cater for alternative fuels. You'll see that the app now caters for battery electric, CNG, LNG, and even hydrogen fuel cell. So we also updated the regulations um, because there are some states that now allow higher mass limits on the front axle for battery electric vehicles. Uh, this uh, change was introduced in October last year and I'll give you an example of this a little later on. We also expanded the safety features uh, for, for the changes that were made to the Australian design rules to cater for wider bodies. Uh, these changes were made in September last year. So if your vehicle complies with certain safety features, it will qualify for a 2.55 meter wide body instead of the normal 2.5 meter maximum limit. We won't make any changes to our vehicle, so we can move on to the body now. The app caters for most body types. For our example, we'll use a curtain cider. And there are different ways in which you can add your body. Uh, for example, you can choose a fully customizable template, or you can go to the public library and choose a body from a specific manufacturer. If you have a CAD drawing, you can also use the DXF import feature to add your own graphic. Let's start with the template feature and add that body. So this feature will add a generic graphic with some default dimensions to our chassis. To make changes to the body, you can either go back to the body menu on the left or you can click on the body itself in the graphic to open the menu. 
Let's start off by changing some of the dimensions. I'll make the body length, uh, let's say eight meters. I'll align the chassis to the rear of the body. So that'll just uh, cut the rear overhang slightly shorter. For height, uh, we can increase the height to, let's make that 2.5 meters. The width we can leave as is uh, on the mass tab. You'll notice that the default mass per running meter for this body is 300 kilograms per meter. You can use this lookup uh, table to read up on some of the estimated values for body mass based on the material and floor type. So for example, if we choose a steel body with a heavy duty floor, that'll increase the body weight to 240 kilograms per meter. But you can also change this and specify the mass in kilograms instead and change this to 2,200 kilograms. You can also change the center of gravity for the body. Um, you can either specify that as percentage of overall length or in millimeters from the front of the body. Uh, over here, you can change the description for the body. That'll also reflect in the masses table at the bottom and be shown on the report. Uh, the position of the vehicle is also on a separate tab. Uh, the default cab gap at the moment is 130 millimeters. So that'll be the minimum required cab gap for this vehicle. You'll notice that we also show the body position from the frontmost axle. That's 875 in this case. We show that to make it easier for you to place the body correctly. So to change the body position, you can either override the dimension here, or you can simply click and drag the body to the required position. If you've made a mistake, you can always go to the undo option. You'll find that on the toolbar, undo or return the body to the previous position. You'll notice that as soon as you add a body, the software will automatically calculate the maximum legal payload, which is just over seven tons at the moment. If you go down to the masses table, you'll see the payload here as well. And you'll see that the rear axle is the limiting factor. So at the moment, the utilization on the rear axle is 100%. The front axle and the total still have unused capacity of about 300 kilograms. So let's see what would happen if we try to increase the payload by the unused capacity of 300 kilograms. So I'll click on payload. You can either click on the menu on the left or on the payload itself. And again, choose the override and change the payload to 7,300. You'll immediately notice a red highlight, the red highlighting on the rear axle to indicate an overload. In this case, the axle is overloaded by 2.4%. We also add a red cross to the dashboard next to regulatory compliance. Uh, you can drill down on that to see that the issue relates to masses. For more information about this, you can go to notes and warnings on the right and select the warnings tab to read up about the details relating to this overload. Okay, so let's say we want to return this to the uh, legal payload. Let's, uh, for example, see if we can shift some of this load. So if we want to get rid of the overload on the rear and move some of the load to the front axle, we could, for example, shift the body forward or shift the load forward. So I'll just try that. I'll just drag the body slightly and I'll drag it forward and you can watch the numbers in the weights table. You'll see if I move that body too far forward, we'll overload the back axle, uh, sorry, the front axle. And if I move it uh, too far back, again, we'll overload the rear axle. So these calculations are done in real time when you make changes uh, to the graphic of the vehicle. So let's undo that change. Okay, so we won't be able to move the body forward because the minimum cab gap is 130 millimeters. Okay, so we now need to, if we want to return to a maximum legal payload, 
we can go back to the payload and deselect the override. Doing that will allow the software to maximize the payload for us again. Okay, you can also make changes to some of the dimensions by clicking on these hyperlinked blue dimensions. For example, if we choose the body length, and then we can go to the lookup table and select, let's say, the maximum body length. So the maximum body length, in this case, will be limited by the maximum rear overhang, which is the lesser of 3.7 meters or 60% of the wheelbase. In this case, it's 3.7 meters. So if we try to make this body slightly longer, you'll notice that that rear overhang dimension will be highlighted in red and we'll get a red cross next to dimensions on the dashboard. So let's bring that back into the legal limit. And we'll return our dashboard to the overview. Okay, so the, adva the advantage of adding a template body is that it is fully customizable. The disadvantage is that the graphic may not represent the actual product. So let's try one of the other options. So for that, I'll first need to remove this body. For that, you can go to the scissors icon and remove it, and then go back to the body menu. And this time around, instead of using a template, we'll choose the DXF import feature. This feature comes with a five-step wizard to guide you through the process of adding your body. So let's start off by choosing our file. We'll choose that from the desktop. I've already got a DXF saved here for a curtain slider. The app will then import that graphic. And now you have a much more representative image for the body. We will go to the next step. Here we can position the body on the at the zero zero on the x and y axes. And next, we can uh, change the dimensions of the body. For example, we can resize the body. So let's make the body seven point six meters again. We can make the width, let's say, two and a half meters. And next, we can specify the body mass as say 2,200 kilograms. And then in the final step, we can give this a description and we'll call it a 7.6 meter curtain slider. And then save and add that to our vehicle. At this point, you will need to select the full screen option again. So I'll do that now. If you need to make changes to your body, you can click on this compass icon uh, next to the body description. That'll allow you to run it through the wizard again to make any changes. By default, your body will be saved to your personal library. Um, but if you want to uh, share your body with your colleagues, you can save it to the team library. Under advanced options, you can also share your uh, body with other users of the software and approve who has access to your products. Okay, so this is the DXF import feature is a great option for bodybuilders, but if you're a dealer, you may prefer to choose a body from the public library. So let me show you that last option. So again, we'll remove this body, go back to body, put inside and this time I'll choose the public library. And I'll pick a 12 pallet curtain slider that is 7.6 meters long from Ors truck. We don't need to make any changes to this body uh, because it is already specced by the manufacturer with the correct dimensions and mass. But I will need to cut the rear overhang shorter. So let's make that 1.9 meters. Okay. So now that we've got the body added, uh, for this body, we will not need to make any changes. Uh, we can now complete our build by adding, let's say, an error kit and a tail lift. For this, I'll go to the equipment menu on the left, choose error kit, 
and let's choose this 900 millimeter error kit. Okay, I will just need to move that into the top of the cab. You can add as many equipment items as you need. So for the tail lift, we can go back to equipment, click on add, go to tail lift, and you'll see that we already have a fairly comprehensive list of tail lifts from all of these manufacturers. If you don't find the tail lift that you're looking for, you can also ask us to add it, and you'll find that feature at the bottom over here. For our example, I'll use this cantilever model from Antio. Right, now that our configuration is complete, we can have another look at the payload. So the maximum legal payload is now 6.7 tons. You can see that in the weights table and the rear axle is still our limiting factor. But you'll notice that we're very close to 100% for the utilization on total and even the front axle. So this is about the optimum or maximum payload uh, for this vehicle. All right, so let's just go back to the payload feature. So this payload is assuming a water level load with the center of gravity in the middle of the body. If you want to add multiple payload objects, you can choose the payload menu and change from simple payload to detailed payload. I'll give you an example of how you can use the template to add pallets. So let's add a generic template item. Uh, you can change the dimensions and the mass for this item, and then use the copy feature to add multiple, let's say, pallets. So let me add four pallets here. All right, you can also have a look at your layout in the top view. For this, you'll go to the orientation view on the right and select top view. You can now move those pallets by just using the click and drag feature and move them next to each other. Let me move this one. Okay, once you've completed your layout in the top view, you can go back to orientation and select the side view again. Notice how the app automatically calculates the new center of gravity for the payload. Let me make one of these pellets quite heavy. I'm going to, going to change pellet four and make the mass 5,000 kilograms, just to demonstrate how the position of the payload uh, will affect your axle masses. Because the, that pellet is quite far forward, we will overload the front axle considerably in that position. So if we drag that to the rear, we'll eventually see how that overload shifts. At that point, it will be legal on all axles. If we move that slightly further to the rear, we'll eventually overload the rear axle. So it's very important to get the position of your payload correct on the deck of the body. If you prefer to let the software calculate your legal payload for you, you can go back to payload and change from detailed to simple payload with our water level load where we have 6.7 tons. Okay, so, so far we've uh, validated this calculation against the Australian national regulations. So let's go back uh, to our regulations here and we'll change the regulation. So there are some states that have exemptions, for example, Victoria, as an exemption for uh, single axles with dual tires and a road-friendly suspension, where the permissible maximum is 10 tons instead of nine tons. So I'm going to remove the national regulations and change our regulations to Victoria and apply that change. And notice how the nine tons now becomes 10 tons. And the total goes from 15 tons to 16 tons. Payload increases by one ton to 7.7 .7 tons now. We're still almost utilizing the entire vehicle to 100%. Although the front axle is now the limiting factor, we only have about 200 kilograms of unused capacity on total. So this is about the maximum payload we would get for this vehicle. Okay, so I have shown you the top view so far. 
still want to show you a few of the other view options that you can access from the options on the right. For example, the center of gravity. You can go to this view to pin the center of gravity for let's say the body and the tail lift. If you want to see the dimension of uh, for that center of gravity in relation to the axles or the ground. We also calculate the overall center of gravity. This value can be used for vehicle stability calculations. For the turning circle view, we can select the smallest turning circle. Here you will see that the turning radius for this vehicle is 10.7 meters curb to curb. Remember the maximum legal is 12.5 meters. And then we can go back to orientation to select the side view. If you need help, you can click on the chat feature in the bottom right corner. Here you can send us a message and someone from the support team will get back to you. Okay, once you've finished your build, you can save your calculation. So that option is on the toolbar. You can save or save as. Uh, you can give it a, your own description and save it to any folder in your library. You can also share your calculations with other users of the software from this icon here. I still want to show you how to compare this vehicle to a similarly spec'd a battery electric vehicle. So what we'll do now is I'll show you how to swap the vehicle. But before we do that, we just want to make a mental note of the payload on this vehicle. So the payload at the moment is 7.7 .7 tons. We'll remember that. And then the chassis mass is about 5.4 tons if we include the fuel. So if we just sort of remember those two numbers, 7.7 .7 for payload, 5.4 for the chassis mess. You can access the swap uh, vehicle feature from the menu here. And then what I'll do is I'll choose a Volvo. So I'm going to go down to Volvo, choose the F E range and a 4x2. And I'll narrow down the search by looking for a battery electric vehicle specifically and one with a day cab. And then I'll pick this one here with a 5.5 meter wheelbase. And then we can click on yes to accept the change. When you swap a vehicle, you will need to tweak your calculation a little bit. For example, we'll need to reposition the error kit on top of the cab. And you'll notice that the cab gap has also changed. The Cab gap is now 245 millimeters, which is the minimum default for this vehicle. So we can leave it at that. But we may need to change the rear overhang, which I'll increase to 2.4 meters to align it with the back of the chassis. So let's have a look at some of the numbers. But before we do that, you may have noticed that uh, this pop-up dialog in the bottom left corner uh, we now show tips here uh, to highlight special considerations for the regulations. Uh, this tip will let us know that this is a battery electric vehicle that qualifies for higher permissible uh, steer axle mass. So if we have a look at the front axle permissible, you'll notice that that has now increased to seven and a half tons. So that is the maximum that Victoria allows on a steer axle for battery electric vehicles. And that is typically one ton more than the legal maximum of six and a half tons. New South Wales, by the way, uh, allows eight tons on the front axle for battery electric vehicles. This vehicle has an eight ton front axle, so we can take full advantage of the seven and a half ton exemption here. Okay, so let's look at some of those numbers now. And we can start off with the chassis mass you'll see that this chassis weighs uh, 8.4 tons, which is about three tons more than our equivalent uh, diesel model. So it is a considerable difference. But if we look at the payload, you'll see that the payload is 6.2 tons, which is only one and a half tons less than what we had on the, on the fuser just now. 
So you can see how important this front axle exemption is for this vehicle to still achieve a reasonable payload of 6.2 tons. Okay, so let's see if this vehicle can tow a small trailer. For that, we will first need to add a tow bar. We'll go to the equipment menu for that, choose tow bar, and we'll pick a typical 127 millimeter bore tow bar. We can adjust the height from the ground for the coupling position to, let's say, 500 millimeters. I'll then go to the trailer menu, I pick a pig trailer, and I'll go to my personal library to pick one that I've already saved here to save some time. Notice how the 10 tons on the rear axle now changes to nine tons. The reason for this is that this exemption, the exemption of 10 tons on the rear axle does not apply when adding a pig or dog trailer to a vehicle. Okay, if we look at our permissible total, we'll notice that we are now limited to 21 tons. That's our limiting factor. And our payload is only six tons for the combination. You also notice that the axles are far below the maximum 100% utilization. So this vehicle would be best suited to a volume application when towing a trailer. We are getting to the end of the demo now, um, but I still want to show you the report. Uh, for this, we can select the PDF report option on the toolbar. And you'll, that'll generate a PDF. You'll notice that I've set mine up to show the side view, the top view, and the turning circle view. You can customize your report from the settings option and the reports tab. Here you can add your own logo and you can choose which views to include in the report. This is also a new feature we added. Previously, you could only include one view in the report and now you are able to add multiple views to one PDF. When you've completed the exercise, you can print, download, or email your report. That's as far as we'll go for the live demo today. Uh, Tony, are there any questions before we go back to the slides to wrap up the session? I don't have any unanswered questions. So we had a couple that popped up there which have been answered, um, but we haven't got anything else to anyone. No. Okay, thank you. You can continue to put your questions into the Q&A there and Tony will answer those for you. Okay, so let's go back to our slides now. I know we covered quite a lot in a short time. So if you'd like a personalized demo for yourself or your colleagues who weren't able to attend today, we are more than happy to do that. You can book a demo from the homepage of our website for a time that suits you. If you'd like to find out more about Truck Science, you can access lots of videos and testimonials on our website at truckscience.com. We will have a stand again at the Brisbane Truck Show next year. So hopefully we'll see you there. If you aren't already using our app, please help yourself to a free trial from the homepage of our website. You can also go to the pricing page. Here you'll see an example uh, for the professional edition, which costs 800 Australian dollars per year for one user. The professional edition is the most commonly uh, used uh, subscription. Most of our bodybuilder and dealer customers uh, choose this option. Right, that's all for today. Um, I will end this session in just a moment, but before you go, please rate this webinar and leave any comments and questions. Right. Thank you for joining us and goodbye.